there are multiples on the table. One is cash, three are FHA, one is VA. So what can you do? She's saying a whole lot of people want to buy this house. But you got this. <laughs> Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans makes the complex simple. Understand the details and get approved in as few as eight minutes by America's largest mortgage lender. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of women's college soccer. It was a beautiful day in Cary, North Carolina, and we are at Salem Stadium at Wakemet Soccer Park, home of the 2018 NCAA Women's College Cup. First up, a sellout crowd expected to see the hometown team from just down the road in Chapel Hill, the North Carolina Tar Heels, taking on the unbeaten Georgetown Hoyas from the Big East. Two matches tonight coming up in our second. You get a chance to see the defending national champion Stanford Cardinal, the number one overall seed, taking on the ACC champion Florida State Seminoles. Should be a couple of great matches tonight. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth. Delighted, as always, to be joined by former U.S. national team captain, Stanford alum, Julie Foudy. Julia said Stanford was the number one overall seed, and it is important to make that distinction because for the first time since 2011, all four number one seeds are here in the College Cup. How fun is that? Awesome. These are some games we're looking forward to. And when you think about it, that first game, University of North Carolina, soccer royalty, 21 national titles, 21 playing against Georgetown, who's seeking its first national title, but what a hot program that's been this year, undefeated. And in the second game, you have the reigning defending champion in Stanford playing a very very good Florida State team that's working, looking for its second national title as well. So I am so looking forward to these games tonight. Should be some excellent soccer played out there. And when you start with the Georgetown Hoyas in the season, they had undefeated for the first time in school history. Plenty of talent on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. But let's look at their breakout star this year, Caitlin Farrell. And what a year Caitlin Farrell has had. Look at that, 18 goals, tied for third nationally. And you look at her three seasons before this. She's a senior. That's more than her combined freshman, sophomore, and junior years. And she gives some pace on that right-hand side for Georgetown. She can score from all over the place, but look for her streaking down that right side. North Carolina made it through the ACC regular season, unbeaten and untied. Now they lost their biggest star, Alessia Russo, in the last game of the regular season, but still plenty of talent to go around. And especially in their freshman, Brianna Pinto, number eight. She's going to run the midfield for them, a goal scorer, and most importantly for North Carolina, a playmaker, all as a freshman. It is the first ever meeting between these two teams. Georgetown looking to make history and make it to its first ever national championship game. North Carolina looking to take one more step toward national championship number 22. Ready? Absolutely. and having a tremendous season and helping them get here. 
How about that? Pretty good pickup, I'd say, for Dave Nolan. His 15th season is the Georgetown head coach. What a tremendous job he and his staff have done with this program. Coming off their third straight Big East title. Anson Dorrance has been at it for a while. His 40th season, 21 NCAA championships, 22 national championships overall. That's their resume coming in. And here's how the Tar Heels will line up. And they're going to be in a 4-3-3. And this is going to be interesting to watch because Leshnack has been splitting time in goal this year. But boy, did she have a tremendous quarterfinal with two penalty kick saves against UCLA. And she is going to need a big game against those front three from Georgetown. You gotten used to it yet? That four back for North Carolina. It's Maybe. something that Anson Dorrance has gone to this year. It just felt it suited the personnel of this team, which as you'll see, plays a little different perhaps than some teams of the past. Ariel Schechtman in goal for Georgetown, just named a first team All-American Big East goalkeeper of the year for the second straight year. Does a wonderful job there in goal. 15 shutouts. It's tough to get one past her. It's best in the nation. This is that goals against average. You see Samantha Lushnet, who Julie just talked about, senior goalkeeper. Number one in the NCAA. I'm near the top in goals against average as well. Georgetown and North Carolina facing off. Is of one the last two. Let's see if they can win this one, take a big step for their first ever NCAA championship game. North Carolina tonight wearing white Georgetown. Georgetown wearing white. I knew I was gonna mess that up with the navy blue for North Carolina. Let me make sure I get it right for you guys. North Carolina in the navy blue. Georgetown in white. You think that'd be sacrilegious, wouldn't you? Right. It's a, it's a Tar Heel Blue. I'm gonna try to match my colors up. <laughs> North Carolina on that far side. Trying to attack. Go back. Brooke Bingham trying to collect it. Now it'll be a Tar Heel throw. And what you're going to find, which is going to be interesting to watch early on, is both these teams like to high press. We know that about North Carolina forever. But this is a Georgetown team that also likes to play that way. So who's going to win that high pressing battle early on? I'm talking to Georgetown yesterday. There was no intimidation. There was certainly a great amount of respect for this Tar Heel team and program. But I think they relish the idea a little bit of coming in here as the only one of the teams not royalty, in Dave Nolan's words, who they have not won an NCAA championship. And they want to come into North Carolina's house and make a statement. And here's Paula Jamino Watnick, all Big East first team, wearing number 10. Couldn't hang on to it, though. There is Alex Kimball, stepped in the top of the attack for North Carolina with Alessia Russo out. Dorian Bailey, number 29. Senior out of Mission, Kansas, U23 U.S. national team member. Bridget Andrzejewski had a block that bounced right back to her, though, so that worked out. And Julie, let's get your Foudy's free kicks for this match for the Hoyles. Right, I think that the most important thing for Georgetown is playing out of that UNC pressure. We've seen teams over the years have so much trouble with it because they make a lot of substitutions, they bring in fresh legs. Can Georgetown handle that pressure? It's one thing I know they're thinking about. They do not want to be chasing the ball all game today. And how about for North Carolina? As you see what they do in this attack here, it looks like they're gonna get a corner kick out of it, first of the match. I think the most important thing is those front three for Georgetown, they are a handful, fast, good on the ball. And that's something they've really worked on in practice all week, is how do you handle this front three from Georgetown? So containing them is gonna be key for North Carolina. A lot of Wubin Moy, number 23, sophomore out of London, England, has three assists in the NCAA tournament, all of them off corner kicks. 
Delivery toward the back post. Kimball headed at center. Georgetown looking to break out the other direction. Here's Jermino Watnick. Little step over move. Got it back. Jermino Watnick trying to set it through for Carusa. Some miscommunication perhaps on that back line for North Carolina as Leshnack was coming out to get it. Nobody really went for it there for North Carolina. So again, Georgetown takes possession of it. And that's the challenge with those front three. With Paul, with Jermina Watnick is a is a dribbler. She loves to slash. She's going to come at you. Caruso's in the middle for Georgetown. Madison Schultz kept it on the ground. Bailey has it, and it is out. That will be a goal kick. Georgetown making it back to its second College Cup in three years. Got past the second-seeded Baylor Bears in the quarterfinals. Early goal in the eighth minute from Kelly Livingstone. And then they had a few more as this one went on. Kira Carusa had one in the 51st. Jermino Watnick in the 76th minute off the rebound. And it was a 3-0 win for the Hoyas to get past Baylor and make it back to the NCAA College Cup. What a matchup this is going to be, by the way, on the right-hand side for Georgetown. You've got Caitlin Farrell, third in the nation with 18 goals, going against Emily Fox, who is just a recent call-up to the national team. That's going to be one to watch all night right there. She's the left back for UNC. Grace Nguyen drives this corner. Second ball tapped forward from Crystal, but no Hoyas around it. Kellyanne <laughs> Livingstone. Kind of a tough one there for Jamino Watnick to handle. There what is, an opportunity that was yeah. for Emily Fox. I know you got to call one of those matches, right, that she played for the U.S.? Yeah, the first first game she played for the United States was against Portugal, September 8th. And there you have Emily Fox. Not even just getting a call up, getting a start in that game. Started the second game as well against Scotland. Yep. 59th player for UNC. Think about that. <laughs> 59th. I said to Aaron Heifetz, media officer for the U.S. soccer team, who's the second? most in collegiate caps. He's like, we don't keep that list and no one is close. <laughs> I was like, come on, standard has to be close. <laughs> He's like, no. It's, it's kind of like it is with NCAA championships, if you think about it. 21 for North Carolina. Yeah. Next closest is three. Some pressure being put on that back line of North Carolina. Jamino Watnick with it at her feet, dancing around. So good with the ball at her feet. Keeps possession, waits for some help. Help wasn't where she thought it was, though. Kimball, really the lone Tar Heel up in the attack right now. Hangs on to the ball. Now has some support. Captain Julia Ashley. Number 16, who finds her way into the attack quite often for this North Carolina team, has at least a point in every NCAA game so far. And, and you are gonna see, they love to get, and there's their, their road to getting here, and they love to get those outside backs forward. There's Kimball, can be a handful up top. Ruben Moy looking for some options. We'll drive it towards Schultz. Headed down by Jenna Royson. A lot of the decision for North Carolina to play in that 4-3-3 with getting those Emily Fox, the outside backs, Julia Ashley forward, is they didn't have any true outside midfielders they felt too. And they have three really good central midfielders in Dorian Bailey. We talked about her at the top of the show. Brianna Pinto, the freshman. Taylor Otto sits in there on the holding midfield. 
And what we're used to seeing with North Carolina is a gritty, is a fighting, high-pressuring team, but not always the prettiest of soccer, mm -hmm. which has always been the one thing, you know, people could say if you're going to criticize anything, right? 21 national titles, how can you criticize anything? <laughs> oh, but they don't play that great sometimes. But now you see a Carolina team that's playing, and it's in large part to those three in the midfield, Pento, Bailey, and Otto. I give them a ton of credit. They're great on the ball, and this is a team that looks different. They're confident. They're moving the ball going to have to defend this free kick now from Georgetown. Going to play it on the ground up toward Caruso, the Stanford graduate transfer. Beautiful ball in, and it's just wide of that near post. Grace Nguyen had a great opportunity with that setup from Caruso. And this is the thing about Caruso. She fights to get on every the end of every ball. She wants to turn the corner, and she finds that little seam. I mean, she has been a gift for Georgetown, and you're going to see the fire in her belly tonight. You saw it at Stanford when she was a player there. She had 15 goals, second on the team for Stanford last year, five assists, and she's bringing that same fire to Georgetown. She's a handful because she's so feisty. Ball intended for Farrell. Georgetown trying to get the leading scorer going. Nguyen, who took that last shot on the ball. Megan Nally. It's a long run, but it is doable for Jermino Watnick. Out of pressure. That ball comes through. It's just outside. Penalty box. Tell you what, Georgetown has shown some good fight just when you think they're going to lose the ball out of bounds and they somehow find a way to squeak it through. Yeah, and that and they were talking about that yesterday when we sat down with their team. Here's Jermina Watnick showing why they call her the ankle breaker. <laughs> uh, they said we just get it to, to Paula and let her do her thing on the outside there. Um, it, they talked about that being really a trait that they took great pride in and that they knew that was something that UNC had taken great pride in over the years, but they were like, that's us, we're, we're gritty, we're fighters. So we're, gonna, we're not afraid of their fight, we're gonna fight just as much, and you're seeing it. I give them the edge in that category, at least it's very early, first 10 minutes, come out strong. This throw intended for Kimball. It was really a pretty balanced attack for this North Carolina team, too. You think about Alessia Russo, tremendously talented young player from England, who was getting some looks with the full English national team before her injury in that Wake Forest game at the end of the regular season. But that injury did not derail this team at all. They did lose in the ACC championship to obviously a very good Florida State team. We're back here in the College Cup. Kimball turning on it, side netting. And you see players like Alex Kimball, you know, getting a look um, and, and more time with Russo going out. But boy, what a loss that was to this team in terms of a player. I, I've never, I've never heard Anson talk with such adjectives about a player. Extraordinary, phenomenal, legendary in her shot. I mean, you. <laughs> These adjectives she, he was using, and she is a tremendous up-and-coming star for England. Ruben Moy, a little more driven corner, the second of the match for the Tar Heels. Pinto, back to Ruben Moy. And under the gloves of Schechtman. Alessia Russo there on the bench. Unfortunately, not able to be out on the field with her teammates, but what a year. You can see how much she impacted this team. Just six goals or four assists, but that shows the balance. I think it also speaks to how impactful she was when those aren't necessarily eye-popping numbers. Russo also just named a United Soccer Coaches first team All-American, as here comes Farrell with some room to move for Georgetown. 18 goals on the season for Farrell. And a little trouble working around Taylor Otto.
you talked about what a year it's been for Caitlin Farrell and talking about needing to step up this Georgetown team lost some big players in their midfield in particular but you think about a Rachel Corbeau's two-time midfielder of the year in the Big East so often the player they could rely on for goals they needed someone to step up and a lot of players did but Farrell most notably and we asked Dave Nolan well, what's been the biggest difference right to go from you know she she had 13 goals in her first three seasons to go to 18 goals this year talk about a jump I think she had eight goals last year so 10 more than last year already and he said confidence you know she she finally believed a little nudge a little love tap into the bench is that what that <laughs> was yes uh he said he, she finally believed that that she could be scoring goals instead of doubting and when you get over that mental hurdle that's when your game opens up as we know a lot of numbers central for both teams right now caruso was calling for it in the middle Carson Nizelek tried to play it wide. Goes to the Tar Heels. Nobody in a position to run on to that one for the Hoyas. We'll take a moment to calm everybody down a little bit. Jeske flipped that ball nicely. It winds up at the feet of Kimball. This could be a chance for North Carolina. Sheffman lost it, but it will be deemed she had possession anyway. Our referee, Tori Penso, coming over. And the senior goalkeeper from San Diego coming up big. What a nice first touch by Kimball to get around. But Sheffman off her line well. Getting the call there as well. Andrew Jeske knows if I just get a little flick on, maybe Kimball can get on the end of this. And this is the thing that they all talk about with Alex Kimball, number 47, their target. Is similar to Caruso on the other side who plays their target for Georgetown. She is a battler. She tries to get on the end of everything and never gives up. And they know given that 50-50 opportunity, she may just get in behind. Caruso. And it taken away by Ruben Moore. Andrew Jeske lifting her head, looking forward. Here comes Ashley, right back to Andrew Jeske. She's gonna keep moving it forward. Try to get the cross through, it does! It's cleared out of the center by Georgetown. Ashley. There's Emily Fox. Dorian Bailey now. Fox had to hold up her run. Bailey still on the ball in the box for North Carolina. The post it took a deflection before Sheckman could get her hands on it. Oh, some nervy moments right now for Georgetown. North Carolina trying to get on the board first. That will bounce harmlessly out of bounds, but it did touch a Georgetown player. Cue up corner kick number three for North Carolina. And this first one, I don't think they thought Andrew Jeske was gonna get it across. No one making that near post run getting in front of the defender, but they didn't miss out on this second one. You see them make the run on this second one and all you needed, that was almost it, was just a little touch on it. They get to the near post on that second one though. That's why you got the coaches harping. Who is making that near post run? Ruben Moy will try it again. It's headed down. Schechtman was going for it. She was on the ground. Kimball, the one, got her head to it. Chance now, though, for Georgetown on the break. Only one defender back. It is Brooke Bingham. Now the Tar Heels all retreating. Jermina Watnick with the ball for Georgetown. Did go out of bounds, so it'll be a goal kick for the Tar Heels. Talk to you about Alessia Russo and her season ending much sooner than she would have liked. It was October 25th, last game of the regular season against Wake Forest. That collision right there suffered a broken leg out for the remainder of the season. Out in the 51st minute. 
Unfortunately, that had to end what had been a very impressive season for her. Used to see Offensive Player of the Year. And a very impressive summer for her with the under-20s for England. Picked up the bronze in the under-20 Women's World Cup. Yeah, they really had a great performance and had several players playing here collegiately in the U.S. on that England U-20 team. Yeah, and, and interestingly enough, not just a great player, which you always have a ton of respect for, but uh, more important in my eyes, a great teammate. And I uh, heard this tremendous story from Anson Dorrance Yesterday, he said, you know, I got a text from Alex Kimball, and she said, uh, Coach, can I can I meet with you? And he goes, oh, gosh, what does that mean? <laughs> and he says, so she comes to my office, and she starts reading me this text, Alex Kimball, number 47, touching the ball right here, got from Alicia Russo, saying, basically, how she was thinking about it at night and just wanted her to know how she felt like this injury was for a reason. It was a chance for senior Alex Kimball to get in her shot and get a chance because she knew when given that shot, she would make the most of it because she's that good. And he said, you know, as she's reading it to me, she has tears streaming in her eyes and I start bawling. And <laughs> I almost started crying I, when he told I, us the story and shared the text. And then he shared it with the team before their first NCAA tournament game and he said the entire room was full of tears but you know what a what a nice gesture by someone who's just gone through so much Russo broken her leg she was just gonna be seen by the English senior team as well and she takes the time to say hey step in there and go for it this is your chance I Julie, love that and you've been on plenty of teams think about what that would make you feel like as a teammate to get that text I mean just what kind of a fire it would put in your belly to play that much harder for your teammate who so unselfishly just sent you that message. Pretty impressive. Here's Farrell. Got the ball across. One hand on it by Leshnack. Quick off her line. The senior goalkeeper will give up the corner. <laughs> He's telling her, her back line to mark a little bit better there. And Leshnack doing well off her line. She's not afraid to do that. Saw her do it quite often against UCLA in the quarterfinal as well. Second corner for the Hoyas. Back post. Farrell is waiting there. And now Georgetown will get a chance to come over and try it on the other side. And this is just a game you don't want to get into if you're North Carolina. Georgetown has been very good on set pieces this year. And Dave Nolan even said, you know, usually teams, they don't want to do set pieces. These players, they thrive because they know that's what wins games. Well, they said that they started scoring off some set pieces early. And I think that's really when they started believing in them a bit more and working them even harder. They haven't been able to manufacture much out of their first three corners so far in this match. First substitution coming in. What you hear are not boos, but woos for Rue Mucherera. Coming in to replace Schultz up top for North Carolina. This is a substitution we expected to see talking with Anson Dorrance yesterday. Mucherera had the first goal of her career to Richard Jr. in the ACC Championship. Here is Kimball. Still has it. Kimball looking for the far post. Oh, she didn't miss by much. And a really nice sequence. All of it started from Andrew Jeske in the midfield. Finds that early ball in. And Kimball finds herself in a great spot. Maybe takes that touch just a little too wide. Because look, look at her angle when she's coming back. And Sheckman has that covered on the near post. What a good look. Got to get that on frame. Both teams have been able to get off some shots, get off some service. I haven't put them away yet. Stramino Watnick, eight goals, six assists on the season, up to noon. Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN2. We'll have number one Notre Dame taking on number two UConn in the women's Jimmy V Classic in South Bend. This one could be an instant classic that you can also watch on the ESPN app from anywhere. 
definitely mark your calendar for that one. Anytime those two programs meet up, especially here in the last couple of years. Let's get a little preview of what you might see later on in the postseason. Nice turn from Carusa. Janina Watnick, two defenders around her. And she did bounce it off one of those North Carolina players to earn her team another corner. Newen has the option of Janina Watnick short. I haven't seen that wrinkle yet from Georgetown. Not gonna see it this time either. It's going toward the center right near the penalty spot. Jim Stout first to the ball for Georgetown. North Carolina looking for a clearance. Mucherera couldn't hang on to it. Gave it away. Bounces off a couple of players. Caruso onto it. Touches it over to New. It's just high. Really came from a series of misclairs by North Carolina. Just can't quite get it out. Georgetown staying in a position. Every second ball that can come to them, and why not? For Newen, she's put them in from outside before. And all three shots in this match coming from Grace Newen, the sophomore from Lilburn, Georgia. Let's talk so much about that midfield, Julie, from North Carolina. I don't feel like we've talked about Dorian Bailey or Taylor Otto all that much. Pinto's had a few moments on the ball. I would think maybe not as much as North Carolina would like. Yeah, and I think that's going to be their challenge. And one of the things that they want to focus on is, is getting Pinto into these type of spaces. Getting a little bit more rhythm. Bailey takes the shot on cue. Schechtman gave it up. And that's that's the, the, the second or third time we've seen Bailey in the box making a run. We've seen her deep in there. And that's that's a run that's not easy to track, as we know, out of midfield. They're going to want to see more of that from the two attacking center mids. Mutrera fighting to try to keep it for North Carolina. Commits the foul instead. Referee's going to come over and have a little conversation with the player. Anson Dorrance says quite fondly, tackles like a rhinoceros. <laughs> it was one of his better ones, I thought. And he has several very colorful and creative ways to describe <laughs> what his players can do on the field. He says, I've done what you guys do before. I know you like things to say. I say, absolutely. Keep them coming. <laughs> and you're right, though. This could be a rather disturbing trend if you're North Carolina because these corner kicks for Georgetown just keep piling up. This is number five. Tar Heel defense still holds strong. Leshnack's coming out for it. Had Kimball right there, a few inches away from her gloves. A couple more substitutions. Both teams go into their benches. Rachel Jones, number 10. Number seven, Amanda Carolyn checks in. Coming in for North Carolina, 10, and Amanda Carolyn coming in for Dino Watnick and for Georgetown. And checking in number nine, and Rachel Dorwart, number nine, also on for North Carolina. What a spark she has been off the bench for the Tar Heels. Comes in up top for Kimball. Bailey, left over the defense, gets it out to Mucherera. May have led her a little too much. Love the effort there 
for Mucharera trying to keep it in. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final Sunday, December 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern right here at ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA Championships. Nice luxury to have if you're North Carolina as well. Dorward coming off your bench, has three goals, leads the team in the NCAA tournaments, and Rachel Jones, number 10, on the ball right there. Also a youth national team player, under 20s. Talking about bringing her in and Jamaica actually wanting to have her come over. Her parents are Jamaica. They just qualified for the World Cup, so she has a big decision to make going forward. Nice to be wanted, though. Yeah, no doubt. portion of this first half. Stewart trying to turn for North Carolina. Georgetown defending in numbers there, but then they lose it out of bounds. Julia Ashley, five goals, 10 assists on the season for the senior from Verona, New Jersey. Jones plays it back. Which rare has been busy since coming into this match. Seen the ball come her way quite a bit. Sure you go check out ESPNW.com. That man right there, Graham Hayes, does a tremendous hardest, job. Hardest working man in the business. Get all of his articles and analysis. Great women's soccer coverage. You want to read about Katarina Macario a little bit before you see her in our second match tonight. The two-time now ESPNW National Player of the Year. She won it last year as well. Another substitution coming in for North Carolina. Annie Kingman, graduate student captain, making her way onto the field. Midfield there for Bailey. Dorwart chasing after this one right on the back of Livingstone. Got to it in the middle. Back on the ball is Dorwart. Had it blocked. Farrell on this near side now. Way back defensively to help win that ball for Georgetown. Not necessarily a good thing. Want her up near the goal. Line, Rachel, line. And this is the challenge that North Carolina presents. When, when you get a ball in to a target forward, you got not just one defender hit you, you got two, you got three. Jones. Stays with North Carolina, at least for the time being. This first half so far, Julian. You know, I think both have had some good looks. It, you know, it's been pretty even. I thought um, Georgetown earlier on, and now we see North Carolina swinging that pendulum back a little bit more. I think Bailey's had some good looks for North Carolina getting forward. Campbell had a good look. But you've got two really good goalkeepers, and Les Schneckin. Checkman, you're just not going to score from 30 yards out on a, on a goalkeeper like that. So, and what you're seeing right now, most of it's been from outside the box. For Georgetown, at least. Look at those box. Working that ball all the way up. Much to the displeasure of Georgetown, does earn a corner kick for North Carolina. And this is their outside back, Emily Fox, who also plays outside midfield as well. You can see she's comfortable on the ball, and she wants to get forward. Forced down, upset, thinking that came off Fox. 
A lot of corners in this first half for both teams. Will one of them make a difference? Great looking ball sent in from Ruben Moy. Schechtman will come for this one. And Ariel Schechtman started her career at UCLA. Made her way to Georgetown. Spent two years, but redshirted her first year, 2014 at UCLA, and then came in. And boy, has she found a home and really grown as a goalkeeper in the three years as a starter with the Hoyas. Jones, quick cross. So you can see wincing a little bit there for North Carolina. Going to have a substitution before this corner kick can be taken from Ruben Moy. Fox will go off and make way for Morgan Goff. Goff started the first two games of the NCAA tournament when Fox was away with the U.S. national team North in Europe. Carolina. Checking in number 14, Morgan Goff, replacing number 11, Emily Fox. Schechtman's coming for it, couldn't catch it, touched it out. North Carolina still trying to make something of it. Now it's cleared. Pinto back to Wubin Moy. You know she can deliver a good looking ball. There is one, but it's too close to those long arms of Schechtman. Solid in there by Schechtman. Coming out, she's clean, she's holding. And boy, has she been, as Jen, you were touching upon, so good for Georgetown. First team All-American just found out as well. Fair. With some substitutions, has dropped deeper into the midfield. Switched over to that left side. They're still playing that 4 3 3, but she's on the left now. Caruso on the right. Chance in the box. Amanda Carolyn. Carolyn in the middle. Carolyn had a goal in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Put in a rebound in the 78th minute in Central Connecticut State. Georgetown trying to get one in the final 10 minutes of the first half, but the ball sticks like glue to the gloves of Lushnat. She had a stretch this year, Julie. You did mention she was rotating time, but just her individually, she had a stretch of 1,119 minutes without allowing a goal. That's mind boggling. Mm. Went from August all the way until the ACC championship game against Florida State. That ACC championship game played right here at Salem Stadium, Lake Merritt Soccer Park. As North Carolina trying to make something of this opportunity on the takeaway. Substitutions for both programs. Saturday, we've got a college hoops doubleheader for you. Number 19, Purdue, and number 7, Michigan. Tip-off, military play at the Chrysler Center at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Then, number 2, Kansas, hosting Stanford at Allen Fieldhouse. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN apps you can watch anywhere. Ball will make its way back to Lushnak. Pinto. Over to Otto. Made Ashley run for that one in the end. Too far for her to get there. Farrell getting a rest as Boo Jackson has come into the match for Georgetown. Freshman of Marlton, New Jersey. Might be the greatest name on the field, Boo Jackson. Yeah, I, I like it. Mm. Although I definitely felt old when Dave Roland told us that she didn't know who Bo Jackson was. <laughs> but she didn't know Bo? 
Carolyn leading the pack for Georgetown. Big defensive stand from Bingham. Stumbled a little bit after the back, but nobody's gonna really mind after she came in. Made no doubt about stopping that attack. What a great defensive play this is. Because Caroline looks like she's in, she's cut it. And Bingham, center back for North Carolina, she actually catches it with her back heel, realizing she's been beat. Wait! Another corner for Georgetown. Livingstone, the one to get to it in the air, but goes out of bounds. Back to Boo Jackson. Sorry, yes. How dare uh, they interrupt? We, yes, we, uh, <laughs> how dare this game interrupt our stories. <laughs> the, uh, we asked, well, it's not Bo, it's Boo. And he said, and Dave Nolan said, yes. And apparently it's because her grandma used to play peekaboo with her and she would laugh the whole time. It was so cute. I thought that was cute. That was cute. I was like, oh, and she kept it. That doesn't. I don't want to be called anything else. Come on, boo. Scoreless first half of this first semifinal. We'll have two here tonight in Cary, North Carolina, the 2018 NCAA Women's College Cup. Stanford, Florida State on deck in the second match. That diagonal ball intercepted by the Tar Heels. Let's go, let's go, let's go. North Carolina looking for its first NCAA championship since 2012. That's a drought by Tar Heels standards, by the way. The longest, if you can believe this, that they have ever gone without winning an NCAA championship. Since the very first NCAA championship was played, they've been in all of them. It's been a whole long five years. 37 NCAA tournaments they've been and are the only team in Division I to be in every single one. 21 NCAA titles. I mean, let's just go through the numbers here. They deserve an Anson and Dino and that staff. I mean, what they've done and the players that have come through here. They won 16 of the first 19 titles. 16 of the first 19. And it's tremendous see where they rank in terms of all collegiate sports, in terms of the most for one school and dynasties that have been created. Oklahoma State Wrestling holding that number one spot with 34 NCAA titles. Yeah, I thought, okay, with 21, they've got to fall in the top three. And we pulled that up. I was like, wait, what? But That's with you. I mean, and, and, his, and Anson's ability and Bill Palladino, who's been his longtime assistant, to continually motivate these players and get the good players and, and and really to keep it as a family it's such a tight knit group from generation to generation which is what you you love to see about any program there's dino who's been along anson's side for forever really <laughs> and and that it reminds me a lot of of gino Ariama and what you see at uconn with that women's basketball program is is it truly is it's a, a tar heel family and those two are the godfathers of it. Think about what Pat Summit did too at the University of Tennessee yeah. in their women's basketball program. Pat Summit, the first basketball coach, male or female, to get to 1,000 wins. That's a feat that Anson Dorrance reached earlier this year, picked up his 1,000th victory. That includes his time as a North Carolina men's soccer coach. How about that little back heel flare from the captain, Annie Kingman. Substitution for Georgetown. That win, number 1,000. Come on, girls, you need a bigger water bottle to dump on it for 1,000. That happened on August 20th against Ohio State. That's awesome. He had 172 wins for the North Carolina men's team, which he coached from 1977 through 1988. Concurrently, by the way, for many of those years with the North Carolina women's team, he founded this women's program in 1979, and now in his 40th season his head coach and signed a five-year contract extension. If you want to hear what he had to say about that, check Julie Fowdy's Twitter. <laughs> Not sure we can say all of the language that was on there on air, but it's worth a read. It's so good. It's so good. It was nothing negative. It was all positive. It was, I want to die on the field, and I hope it's after I've 
beaten Duke really. It might feel negative solidly. to Duke, but I mean, they expect it in this rivalry. Yes. Duke, North Carolina. I want to die after I've thrashed Duke <laughs> on the field. That was essentially it. With a little language. <laughs> Can't use on air. That ball right in the middle. Oh, it's saved by Schechtman. Another great Sheckman save. And it's another a build up by North Carolina, something we haven't seen as much in the past. The deflection off the clear and Dort there to try and put it back. And if you're wanting it to land at anyone's feet, Rachel Dort right now is the one you want it to land at. But Sheckman coming in with the big save there. Dort leading North Carolina in the NCAA tournament has three goals. All those coming off the bench. Coming up at halftime, we will give you a preview of our second NCAA National Semifinal between Florida State and Stanford. Also tell you about how our ESPN soccer team supports V Week. And we'll have Julie's first half highlights and analysis. One, one minute, one minute remaining to from in the first half. his thoughts on this first half. And I think if you're Georgetown, you think, okay, we got to hold the ball. We've got to find our forwards a little bit more. We got to get them more engaged in this game, right? We didn't see much of Farrell. We saw a little bit of Carusa early on. Not much of Jermino Watnick. I mean, those three, if they're humming for Georgetown and they're going to bring him in back in this second half, getting a little bit of a rest. That's a tough front three for North Carolina. And I think if you're North Carolina, you're thinking, hey, we're getting in the right spots. We just got to finish them here. Getting around the corner on the inline. Bailey's gotten in a few times. Dorwart we just saw. Kimball got in. Good combination work here through the midfield. But in the end, it's out of bounds for the Tar Heels. Three. Two, one. As the seconds tick down, we will see Ladies zeros on the scoreboard the after the first 45 minutes. Neither team able to find their way through. Get a chance to get in the locker room, chat a little bit. Get ready for half number two. Stadium, make sure to visit the NCAA Fan Fest outside the section 110. We have some Georgetown fans in attendance here. It wasn't too far. The team told us they drove down. Yeah, they had a bus, they said, that was bringing student section. They actually, uh, they said it was tremendous on campus. They lined up and, the, you know, the athletic department and the athletes and the students, they all kind of wished them off as they came up here to Raleigh. Both these programs getting some great support from their other I athletic department teams on campus. Just a few minutes here, we will have Georgetown head coach Dave Nolan. Big East coaching staff of the year in 2018, well deserved the way his team ran through not just the Big East, but the entire season unbeaten, set a school record with 21 wins. Find themselves tied here at the half of this first semifinal against North Carolina. Sometimes coaches take their time, you know, need to <laughs> get their thoughts them. together. <laughs> uh -huh, I know, it's hard. Pull them away at halftime. I see him, though. There he is. <laughs> we are now joined by head coach Dave Nolan. Coach, give us your thoughts in this first 45 and maybe what you'd like to see in the second half. I think we're getting a little bit stretched. Um, I think the gaps between our center back all the way up to our forwards is, is too big. And I think their midfield is starting to kind of run us into a little bit of trouble. And um, we need to try to get our back four a little bit higher, a little bit quicker. We can always adjust as the play starts to take shape. But I think we're just getting a little bit too stretched in the middle of the park. And when we, when we get the ball, I feel we've had enough moments where we've had 2v2 and 3v3 situations where we haven't made the most of them. I think we've been in too much of a hurry to try and get the ball in quickly instead of letting the run take a little bit longer, get a little bit of a better angle and maybe a, a larger gap to get the ball through. Well, Coach, thanks for sharing your thoughts. We look forward to seeing you in the second half. Thank you. 
No score in this first half between North Carolina and Georgetown. Coming up, we'll preview our next semifinal. Florida State taking on Stanford. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. About to start the second half of this first semifinal of the 2018 NCAA Women's College Cup. No score after the first 45 minutes between Georgetown and North Carolina. We're now joined by North Carolina head coach Anson Dorrance. Coach, what did you think of that first half? <laughs> it was it was gritty. Uh, that's a great team. They're tough in the air. Uh, they're generating corner kick after corner kick. Uh, their right side is so good at penetrating off the dribble uh, and we're isolating our outside back on that side. We've got to help her a bit, but we also have to get our outside backs forward. Uh, we've done some good things going forward, but uh, they're, a, they're a tough team and uh, we've got to play better. What were some of the things you said at halftime, Coach, in terms of adjustments? Well, obviously, I think uh, we can play a bit better. I, I don't think uh, that was us at our best, so I think uh, We've got to, I guess, have the confidence to know that even against a very gritty, determined team like Georgetown, we can play. And right now, I think uh, some of our kids are playing a bit too fast. Uh, we're lacking a bit of composure. We're playing some balls out of bounds. And I just think there's another level in us. And the challenge for me at halftime was to get them to play better. And also, our outside backs haven't really been involved. We want them involved, uh, uh, so let's uh, see if we can uh, get them engaged a bit. All right, we'll see if that message was received well. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. We'll also see how the Tar Heels do. Chance here on this set piece after the foul against the Hoyas. Georgetown in white, North Carolina in navy in this matchup tonight. Emily Fox just had a, her debut with the full U.S. Women's National Team back in the lineup for North Carolina. Got this ball to the other side of the field. And they're trying to create something offensively. Lana Wubin Moy up toward Kimball. Not close enough. It'll be a goal kick for Georgetown. Ariel Schechtman. First team All-American goalkeeper, three-year starter in goal for the Hoyas, three-time All-Big East, two-time Big East goalkeeper of the year. And it's been tough to score on this season. 15 shutouts leads the nation. Her offense has been pretty good, too. This is Paula Jamino Watnick with her left foot, calling Sam Leschnack into action. And the senior goalkeeper for North Carolina. Got down for it, no problem. What a performance she had when North Carolina got past UCLA earlier in this NCAA tournament. Two saves and a penalty kick shootout. So here come the Tar Heels again. It's been pretty physical. Saw a foul called. We were finishing up listening to Anson Dorrance at the Tar Heels. An early free kick this half. There's Dorian Bailey with some space. Right along the edge of the box, the shot, and is saved. Dorian Bailey again. She's been so strong in midfield tonight. Sheckman denying every opportunity, though, has been equally strong for Georgetown. First corner kick of the second half. We had 11 in the first half playing with fire, both teams defensively as both have shown to be very capable of being dangerous here. No problem that time though. Schechtman making it look easy. And someone who always made things look easy when she was wearing Tar Heel Blue. Heather O'Reilly, great to have you up here. Hey, yo in the house. <laughs> this is your house though, really. It is my house. I'm in Welcome. your house. Welcome yeah. to my home. <laughs> It's good to be here though. Thanks for having me. Well, of course, you enjoyed some time in this field as well with the NWSL, North Carolina Courage, getting a championship. It's all you do is win, 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 right? <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, no, this field has been good to me from my days at Carolina. I won a national championship in 03 and 06. Ages me a little bit, <laughs> but uh, both were on this pitch, so it was a really nice way to go out as a senior. And now to kind of come full circle, be back again with the North Carolina Courage is really special. Hey, you only won two out of your four. That's by those days standards. Uh, how many do you have, Jules? Uh, no, I don't have any, <laughs> thanks. Good point. Two shots. Anson brings that up every, every time. You know, if you does. had come here, you would have won four. Uh, well, well, you can't have them all, Jules, and you've had your fair share of winnings. How, how about you going overseas, playing, of course, in England, having a, a great time over there, and then you come back here and then win the national title? How has that whole journey been? Well, of course, people gave me a hard time. They're like, Heather, you would jump on the team that's 11 <laughs> points ahead. <laughs> Courage was having a fantastic season when I was able to jump in with them. Uh, but hopefully I added an element that helped us uh, cross the line, win regular season. Chance here for North Carolina, still in the box. I know you don't mind me interrupting for that. That's OK. Checkman again. Heather, take this replay, please. Carolina is getting some chances in this beginning of the second half, fighting a lot of grit. I'd like to see uh, Taylor Otto with UNC kind of control their midfield a little bit more, but here you see her kind of spray it wide. They're able to get a good cross in the box. UNC needs to slash the goalkeeper a little bit more. They're kind of letting her handle a lot, but Maddie Schultz following up. But, um, you know, slashing the goalkeeper, I think, is going to be key for UNC tonight. Getting in front of her a little bit? Yeah, her I mean, a there, bit. Uh, lots of, uh, Wood and Moy has put in some wonderful balls, and, you know, nobody's kind of cutting in front of the goalkeeper, so all it takes is a little a little flick in that space. I do have one question. Where does this navy blue come from? Uh, on the, uh, Do you know the answer to this? We're used to Tar Heel blue with this team. I know they've done it quite a bit this season, but yeah, trying I mean, to get used I'm, to it. I'm biased, of course, to the Carolina blue, but... Uh, you know, just they make here. anything look good. Good. Kimball, and her shot blocked. We were talking earlier, Heather, about how close that Tar Heel family is and how much you guys all across the lines and generations uh, stay in touch. How, how, now that you're living here, how often do you, do you get to see them and watch them play? Yeah, I get to come to as many games as I can, of course, with my uh, courage schedule it was difficult to see too many of the games early on in the season but i love this environment i love the family atmosphere that anson dorrance and bill paladino has built over the years it's a special one that's not like this too many other places and um that's why i decided to move a half mile from campus because i didn't love this carolina <laughs> family just that much so uh, it means a lot to me and i'm happy to be here as a proud alum and fan now I'm guessing the entire student athlete experience over there in Chapel Hill for you, Heather, was a, a pretty good one. It was. It was. I loved going to school at University of North Carolina. I met my husband, Dave, who played lacrosse at Carolina. Um, and just the community and, and university is one that's really special to us. So uh, loved my loved my time there. And, and of course, I've decided to make that my home going forward. Well, I know that they are all happy to have you here, happy to see you playing in the NWSL as well. Thank you for coming up and hanging out with us. Oh, thank you. And go Heels. I'm probably not supposed to say that. <laughs> you're not officially you, on the broadcast. You are, you're allowed. You're allowed to say that. <laughs> Good to see you, Heyo. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Appreciate it. Heather O'Reilly joining us, former U.S. national team member and North Carolina Tar Heel, now a member of the North Carolina Courage, is Caitlin Farrell blasts a shot toward the goal for Georgetown. Speaking of slasher, there's one for Eva Heather before you go. She, they almost got a little touch on that. Farrell making that cut. Oh, Carusa almost just getting a little deflection. And if Farrell's going to come alive in this game and Carusa, then that's going to be a game changer for Georgetown because right now Farrell's been a little bit quiet on that flank. She went out for the last few minutes of that first half and actually moved deeper into the midfield for part of the first half as well. So we'll see if she comes up a little more revved up here in the second half. I think we've seen that little pop for both teams these first nearly 10 minutes to the second half. <laughs> I love how Heather, when I give her a little shtick about not winning four, <laughs> like Mia and Lil all did back in their days. You know, if you didn't win four, it was like, what's wrong with you? I know. You didn't win all four years you were at North Carolina? <laughs> she, she gives it right back. Well, how many of you were? <laughs> you, you had to expect that. It's a great point, you know. Heather. Yeah. 
Yes. Just a little fiery KO. Oh, I love it. Played a new position, too. Playing outside back for this North Carolina team. Came off the bench. It's great to see her back playing in the States, too, and still playing, even though she retired from the national team. That combination broken up by the Tar Heels. Kimball working so hard at the top of the attack for North Carolina. Dino Watnick has Farrell outside, but didn't have an opportunity to get it there. Instead, it's North Carolina coming the other way. Dorian Bailey looking for some options, has a few runs crossing in front of her. Gets it over to Otto. Now the other way, a chance to break. Farrell calling for it. Newen couldn't lift her head in time to get it there. A spot in the NCAA championship game on the line for these two teams. Georgetown, a perfect unbeaten season for the first time in school history to make it here. Schultz with the cross, it's through the gloves of Schechtman. And Andrew Jasky smacks the ground in frustration after missing that open goal. I was just thinking as I looked up, is it still raining and how much is that gonna affect the goalkeepers? with these flighted balls in and you can see it right there it's been pouring. just a couple minutes ago it was it was teaming down because Sheckman we just have has haven't seen that from it's been clean all night and that's something both teams are gonna think about and take advantage of that shot from distance now becomes a little bit more realistic it's lightened but it's still coming down yeah beautiful sunny day but there has been a little bit of precipitation as it's gotten into the evening here in Cary, North Carolina. A little bouts of it during the day as well, on and off. It's Doran saying he also thought his team could combine a little more. You see that here as they get it to Kimball. Kimball had it taken right off of her foot though. Georgetown defense enjoying the nickname of the Stingy Hoyas this season for how well they keep the other teams out of their goal. And here come the defending national champs, Stanford in the house, as they are set to take on Florida State in game number two. Speaking of being unbeaten, they are unbeaten on this season as well. And in fact, it has been 45 straight matches since Stanford last lost. It was early in the season last year against the Florida Gators. And there's Andrew Jeske. Perhaps an opportunity to make up for the opportunity lost a few moments ago. Not gonna happen that time. Jermino Watnick. Can the ankle breaker get an opening? Tough to gain an advantage in this match. Fox. Back to Schultz. Emily Fox missed the first two games of the NCAA tournament with the U.S. Women's National Team. Knew she left her team in good hands as Farrell trying to lead Carusa. How about the composure from Leshnack way out of the box? Played it no problem, brought it down, cleared it out. <laughs> Connection's just a little off, but here's a chance for Farrell, the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. All-American, Caitlin Farrell, looking to leave her stamp on this college cup. Not in the place she wanted to put it. Uh -huh. Checking in number nine, Rachel Dorward. Replacing number 47, Alex Kimball. See some substitutions also already pitch, coming 10, in Rachel for North Jones, Carolina. Number one, Dorward Schultz. and Jones coming back in. Remember, you are allowed one re-entry in the second half in NCAA soccer. A couple of new attacking players now, though, up top for North Carolina. Andrew Jeske 
Looks like she's moved to the middle doorward out wide. Right now trying to defend Big East Defensive Player of the Year, Megan Nally, the junior out of Herndon, Virginia. Trying to get the attack going for her Hoyas. Grace Nguyen. Oh. That ball bouncing up and over. And Kira Caruso, the former Stanford Cardinal, trying to will her team on. All of that started with Megan Nally, as you pointed out, Jen, outside back, getting forward. And Caruso almost just getting, and you can see her knowing, and she is sniffing out all the time. She's ready for that. If I can just get a little flick on this. It's that instinct in the box. Replacing number 11, Emily Fox. 10 goals, 12 assists for Kira Caruso in her first and four, only Bridget season Andrew with Jesse. the Georgetown Hoyas coming over as a graduate student. Working on her master's degree in integrated marketing and communications. Farrell for Caruso. And a little bump from Bingham. Held her ground defensively. I know, I know, I know. Morgan Goff saw in the first half as well. She also started the first two games of the NCAA tournament when Emily Fox was out. Kingman back on. Number seven for North Carolina, Anson Dorrance. Never afraid to use his bench. And one thing I will say, and I think you'll see with a number of the teams that we have here at the College Cup, that the level doesn't drop. In fact, sometimes it raises when they go to their bench. And you have to have depth to get to where you are. This stage and this point of the season. No, and, and the work rate never drops either. You see that from both of these teams. Chance in the back, a lot of traffic, but Sheffman coming through all of it. Sunday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN2. Great women's basketball matchup. Number one, Notre Dame taking on number two, UConn, and the women's Jimmy V Classic in South Bend. Could be an instant classic, and you can also watch it on the ESPN app. Back and forth, up and down we go here, and an action as both goalkeepers touching the ball in a couple of minutes. Caruso. Slew of Tar Heel defenders around her, still gets free, gets it through, Lushnak. Flying through the air, the greatest of ease. Sam Leshnack also started every match in goal for North Carolina last season. Collision, a couple of players go down. It's going to be a North Carolina kick coming. So we were today up there up top for North Carolina, a player who Anson was talking about who said who's struggled a little bit with some back issues, so hasn't gotten the minutes that she'd hoped for because she's had to rest herself some. Another one of those players who has been spent some time in the U.S. Youth National Team system. Once again, let's be a pretty good set piece opportunity here. This is the way North Carolina started the half. Their first free kick a little further out. This one a little more direct. Softball tried to get up and over the wall. And with this rain, I say drive it in there and try and get something on it on a flick. You gotta fly it, right? You cannot softball this because it's still wet. It's still coming down. It's not coming down as hard. Test those keepers. There's a more driven ball for Ruben Moy. There you go. Checkman passes that test. 
Back to Heather O'Reilly's point early on, though. Ruben Moy again, she likes to drive that ball, ball across the field. We've seen her do it a few times. But what we're missing, and what you, sorry, what UNC is missing is that little slashing run. Getting in front of the keeper, getting a little deflection on it. Nearly saw that on the other end in the first half. As the day tries her luck. It's taken back away. Ashley on the ground. That's one of the things Anson Doran said a couple of times when we talked to him there at the start of the half, getting his outside backs more involved. Yeah, Substitution Ashley for sure, that right now, back is one. She leads the team Amanda in assists. Carolyn, She's got 10 assists on the year. Grace Newen. What did you say? No, no, no cheapies either? No set pieces. <laughs> got most of them through the run of play, not off corners. Amanda Carolyn just in the match for Georgetown on the ball now. Good defense again by Ruben Moy as well. She's a talented young player, Ruben Moy, sophomore, member of the England U-17 national team. Place place for North North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, 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 Pinto, Pinto. Pinto. back into the match. Taylor and this Otto. is one of those moments when you're looking at a player like Brianna Pinto, under-20 national teamer, really good on the ball, right? But as a freshman, can you challenge them to say, okay, here's your chance now to come into this game and put your stamp on it. Because we haven't seen her put her stamp on it yet, yet she has all of the ability and potential in the world to be able to do that. Local kid who had her heart set on coming to North Carolina. Grew up in Durham. Her dad played soccer at North Carolina. Recruited by Anson. Yeah. <laughs> She was a ball girl for the teams. I mean, she had posters on the wall. There was really no, <laughs> no question. No we like, did you even look anywhere? She's like, no, my neighbor was the assistant at Duke. He didn't even recruit me. He knew. <laughs> Done deal. Chance now, Dorward fighting for it in the area. Fought her way to a corner kick. I actually think that's a good call by the referee. Stout thinks it hit Dorward, but he did a little step over on that one. Once again, Lana Wubin Moy will be the one to take it. We'll see if Schechtman has to make a play. Looks like that is out of bounds. First time we've seen Wubin Moy do that. That is the seventh corner kick opportunity of the match for North Carolina. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final Sunday, December 2nd. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. One of these teams will be in that championship game for Georgetown, it will be the first time ever playing in a national championship. North Carolina has been there a good number of times with those 21 national NCAA championships, excuse me, that they have won. Bingham. Sophomore from Laurel Springs, North Carolina. And we talked earlier about Anson's <laughs> ability to describe his players. And he said, I said, which player most surprised you this season? And it was her. We'll see if Dorward can try to surprise the Georgetown defense. He said, Brooke Bingham. Never, never thought that that goat farmer, but no. <laughs> yeah, goat farmer. Yeah. She always surprised me. We said goat farmer. And he said, yeah, she, a goat herder. She's a goat herder in Western Carolina. Said she, said she sent videos of herself <laughs> juggling around the goats. Right, around and through the goats. She'd send me videos. Homeschooled. 
The kid's amazing. Oh, I love it. Never thought that goat herder would be as good a player as she is. Well done, goats. Good training. I've heard of him in yoga, not so much in uh, <laughs> soccer training, but hey. Crowd like in the move on the far side of the field. Farrell back to get it for Georgetown. Jones will take it right back for North Carolina. Meanwhile, here come the 2018 ACC champion Florida State Seminoles. Last time they were on this field, beat North Carolina to win their sixth ACC championship. Trying to win their second national championship, having won their first in 2014. And here's some of the challenge for Georgetown with them unable to get a hold of the ball. They're doing a lot of chasing, and what it also does is it pulls their two outside wingers, their forwards, Farrell and Jermino Watnick, or whoever's on that left side. Right now it's Carolyn. They pull them back, and they're so so they're having to come into midfield to get the ball and then beat a midfielder on top of defenders. Just they're they're pulling them away from their own goal. Dorian Bailey. Her shot is wide. They bounced off the Georgetown defender. And again, it's Bailey in that middle position, finding a seam. She's been so good at the top of the box there, just trying for a little deflection. I still think that's hopeful against a Sheckman type player. But in this rain, I think that's one you take. Ruben Moy's delivery is low, bounces, and is cleared by Georgetown. Bingham I'm back to Ruben Moy. Bailey. Little behind Jones. Caruso. Back onto it. Jermino Watnick got it back to her. She has Farrell to her right. But Pinto bearing down her back. Was there a foul on referee? right there does not blow the whistle a defensive effort from Pinto there to get back into the play and break it up and get the ball back for North Carolina I mean the yard she that Pinto covered to get back on that one as well here's the Pinto and Carusa is in they get Pento, she never gives up on this ball. That's 40, 50, 50 yards she sprinted to get back. Saves that play, because Caruso in front of goal, we've seen what she can do. And it's interesting, because earlier in the season when Carolina lost to Stanford, and Sophia Smith was in the middle, beat Pento on a ball, got around her and scored, and Dan Anson Dorn said, and I turned to Pento and I said, you want, you want to be a player of that caliber? You learn to defend as well. And he said ever since then, she's had this bite and growl to her. And there it is. I mean, it's those moments when you play good teams and you get against a really good player, you go, okay, all right, I'm gonna learn from that and I'm gonna grow. That was an overtime win for Stanford on their home field against North Carolina earlier in the season. Emily Fox back in the match. Off of the ball, takes a shot. Anson talked about wanting to get his outside backs forward. They've been more successful in this half. Emily Fox, another one, the left back here. Makes that first good cut, has the composure to make the second cut, but then just technically, it fails her on the end, but she did well. She sees a window here, sees another window. She has just got to drive that one low. Do you think, Julie, as this match goes on scoreless, does it favor one team over another to be? Yes, I do. This one? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't have to think about that one. It favors North Carolina because you're, you're seeing they substitute in lines. They substitute a lot of players. They get fresh, fresher legs on there. And I think it always favors North Carolina because of that, because they can throw so many numbers at you. 
And you're seeing a little bit of fatigue on that back line for Georgetown. And as this game opens up, that's when North Carolina pounces. Ashley onto the ball. Rade. Jones had it for a moment. That leap of faith from North Carolina opened up an opportunity for Georgetown. Once again, Pinto back bothering the ball here, who was feral that time. I mean, you're telling me that's a player who wasn't playing defense much <laughs> earlier in the year? I mean, she took two that to heart. Huge plays by Pinto there. And then you saw her throw her head back because then after all that work, the last thing you want to do is give the ball away. And that's where North Carolina has to be a little bit more careful. Both teams. Bailey looking for some help as we day. We did not see in the first half, but getting some good minutes here in the second half for North Carolina. Kimball with time to turn. Jones has made her way out wide. Cross, though, not the way she wanted that one to go. Well, we start with the Red River rematch at noon Eastern between number 14, Texas, and number five, Oklahoma, on Saturday. Then Memphis taking on number eight, UCF, for the American title. And at eight, number two, Clemson, battling Pittsburgh in the ACC championship. All three of these championship games are on ABC and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Substitution for Georgetown, number 28, Jackson. Jackson for number 18, Caitlin Farrell. As you were talking about, Julie, a few more substitutions into the match for North Carolina. The Schnack holding strong in goal. A couple of times she's had to come out and make a play. North Carolina just had to go through an overtime affair in the quarterfinals against UCLA. They led 2-0 in that match, wound up being tied 2-2, went to double overtime, and then won it in penalty kicks. No overtime matches for Georgetown in the NCAA tournament. A little less drama on their end of things. <laughs> Kimball, bouncing ball, what will she do with it? Touch with the outside of her foot, put it a little too close to Jenna Stout. The Tar Heels to take the corner. Ruben Moy's been busy. Ninth corner kick of the match for North Carolina. Look at this. Look at this cheeky little flick. And then picks it up on the other side for the corner. Nice. I like it. Kimball getting her opportunity. He's gonna come off for a few minutes. Alessia Russo injured. Kimball's been the one to try to step into her shoes at the top of the Tar Heel attack. Ruben Moy, back post ball. Tar Heels couldn't get it back in front of the goal. North Carolina has made 11 substitutions just in this half. Coming up after this one is over, it'll be Florida State and Stanford. Defending national champion Stanford Cardinal taking on the Florida State Seminoles. The last two times those two teams have met, the winner has gone on to win the national championship. Katarina Macario, the two-time ESPNW National Player of the Year for Stanford, one you don't want to miss. Dana Castellanos, Venezuelan sensation for Florida State. But by no means are either of those two teams one player dependent, both very talented top to bottom. Jenna Royson. Freshman who's really impressed at Coach Dave Nolan on that starting spot. In the 
the NCAA tournament. Here's Andrew Jeske back into the match. Lays it outside for Ashley. Ashley looks up. Back to Andrew Jeske. Now Ashley's there again. The Georgetown defense shuffled the pieces just enough. I think you see Julia Ashley there thinking, sh should I have taken it myself? And this game, when it opens up like that, a nice ball in to Ashley. That first touch just takes her a little bit wide. I don't think she's thinking, I'm going to take this to goal the entire time because that first touch doesn't go to goal. Tenth corner kick for the Tar Heels. Ashley, her head are not on target. Substitution for Georgetown. Carson Ashley checking back in. Back in. Replacing number 10, Paulo Termino Watnick. Watnick's going to get a little bit of a rest for Georgetown. It was nice look back into the match. Junior who started all but three matches this season for the Hoyas. It's a race to the ball now for Georgetown. Carus is in the middle. What a great defensive play by Brooke Bingham. Ruben Moy gets tied up with Ashley there, and she has to cover for them. She first gets the block, and then she has the presence of mind. It knocks it off. Georgetown, great play by Bingham. That was Boo Jackson making the run for Georgetown. Freshman who's come off the bench in every NCAA tournament match for the Hoyas so far. Under nine minutes to play in this first NCAA semifinal match of the 2018 Women's College Cup. North Carolina Tar Heels should feel quite at home here at Wake Med Soccer Park. Their stadium under construction over in Chapel Hill play all of their home games in this soccer complex, not on this field. But in this complex is Sandrew Jeske draws the foul. Andrew Jeske's been active. She was the one who played the ball into Julia Ashley in that last play. What do you make of this here? It's an interesting opportunity. I've seen so many corner kicks. Slightly different angle on this one. These obviously are tougher because Sheckman has to decide how far does she want to come out. If you can play that right in between and make her have to make that choice. That's the ball there. Sheckman opts for the punch. Fox. Two defenders around her. Georgetown closing in. Will Fox be able to escape the trap? She will not. Substitution for Georgetown. Fox saying that when she went away and obviously not going to turn down a call up to the full U.S. Women's National Team, even though it meant missing the beginning of the NCAA tournament, but said she felt completely confident that. Her team is going to take care of business, give her an opportunity to continue playing as she's been able to do since returning. Bailey onto the ball now for North Carolina. A little shake and bake from Bailey. Still has it, had a look. Shot blocked, and then Schechtman, you say it went out, but she might have done something on that attempt. That is not what you want to see if you're Georgetown. Ariel Schechtman, first team All American goalkeeper. I told you that it's been raining, it's a slippery surface. You can see the concern on Dave Nolan's face. Mm. Immediately like grabs her knee, yeah. too. means 
Time for Lauren Gallagher to warm up just in case on the sideline. Not sure what's going to happen here with Schechtman. Everyone will take a moment. 7-10 on the clock. No score. These two teams trying to make it to the NCAA championship game. Gallagher has appeared and started in two matches this season, should she be called upon, but certainly that would be a big loss if Schechtman is unable to continue. North Carolina trying to get back to the NCAA championship game. The last time they won it all, 2012 out in San Diego. Taken on Penn State, and boy, did they ever take them on. Kalia Ojai scored early. That was the second minute, and then the goals, they kept on coming for the Tar Heels, who won it 4-1, to one, their 21st NCAA women's soccer title. North Carolina trying to make it back there. They were in the College Cup in 2016, same time that Georgetown was there a couple of years ago. Both of those teams lost in the semifinals, did not play one another. ACC trying to regain a spot at the top as it's been a little more dominated by the Pac-12 here the last few years. I don't want to brag, but three out of the last five <laughs> coming from the Pac-12. That league has certainly produced some champions, no doubt, these last few years. Sheckman clearly distraught. She tries to get to her feet. Uh, and it looks like she is going to have to come off. So, Julie, how, I mean, if at all, does this change yeah, that? Yeah, well, and not only is that. If she indeed comes off, which it looks like she is, she's been behind the goal. I mean, it, it's such a loss for the team. We've seen her presence in this game, but then also is, you know, one of you leading and leaders on the team, your senior, and how does that affect you mentally as well? So you have to wrap your brain around, okay, I can't let myself get upset by this. You never want to see your leader and your senior go off the field like this. And you're looking at seven minutes left in this game still. So you look to your leaders there, right? You're going to look to your captains to try to make sure that this is not a dip in any way. North Carolina looking to do just the opposite, take advantage. And the Florida State lost their goalkeeper, Brooke Bollinger, in the ACC championship game. North Carolina scored a minute later. Will this be a challenge for the new goalkeeper? Gallagher does not have to make a play as a foul is called beforehand. And how about that for Gallagher coming in with seven minutes? She's got a smile on her face. That's a good sign. But the first thing you have to face is a corner kick against the team that's very good at him. And the way this match has gone, it probably won't be the last one she sees either. That was corner kick number 11 for North Carolina. Now, if you're North Carolina, you have to be thinking, we got to test her, mm -hmm. right? we got to test her early. We're going to fly some balls in there, some crosses in there. Georgetown. Too far for Carusa. Carson Nizalik. We didn't get to talk about Megan Nally on that last play as well. Cut flying across to block that shot by Bailey. What a great defensive play. And she's one of those players that's going to have to step up, protect her goalkeeper. Gallagher's only, as I said, appeared in two matches this season. Schultz with a chance to get in behind for North Carolina. Was it a foul? Oh, yes, it was! Penalty kick coming! North Carolina with a chance to take the lead. Mm. Schultz with the cut. 
takes his second touch here. It's clumsy, but you're going away from goal. You're. Uh, I'd say I would let that play with si less than six minutes to go. As you're taking a, a touch away from goal. Gallagher readies herself. Taylor Otto will be the one to take it for North Carolina. Otto. Your first touch of the game. <laughs> Welcome to the game. Oh my gosh. There's the takedown. And Lauren Gallagher with the reaction save. Oh my goodness. You never know when you might be called upon to be the hero. Gallagher's ready and fired up now. First touch of the game for Lauren Gallagher. Tar Heels. That'll Let's give you some confidence. It. I'd say so. Feel unstoppable. You're going to bat one of those away. Opportunity gone by the wayside for North Carolina. We are still tied. It is one of those big five moments all teams focus on. Last five minutes of the game, four and a half now on the clock. Will one of these two teams be able to capitalize, save their legs from having to go into overtime? Get to that national championship. Royson. Got it forward for Caruso. One on her back. It's Bingham. Caruso. It's touched in front. Good help defense by the Tar Heels as that ball spun in front of the goal. Caitlin Farrell committed the foul before she got the ball. Good signs, though, for Georgetown. Caruso, Farrell on the ball. And Caruso has this wonderful ability with her back to goal to spin players, as you saw there. If she can get around the corner and find a seam, that's where Georgetown's going to have some success in these final minutes. Here at Caruso, the chance to win the national championship with two different teams in back-to-back -back years. Something with a little bit of uh, digging and research and some help from our friends. We found out Nicolette Dries did. She did that with Florida State in 2014, then transferred to Penn State and won it in 2015. Farrell, full head of steam, slows it up, takes the shot, not a lot on it. Not her best effort. Just in case you need a refresher, and should we get there, here are the rules. In the NCAA postseason, we're looking at two 10-minute overtime periods if needed. It is sudden victory, which means we end early if somebody gets a goal. If we are still tied after two, we head to the penalty kick shootout. It would be two in a row for North Carolina if that is the case, as they got past a tough UCLA team in the quarterfinals in that fashion. Nizalik couldn't connect. What an incredible array of emotions we've had here in these final 10 minutes. You see the crutches coming out for starting goalkeeper, first team All-American, Ariel Schechtman now on the bench, just there behind her head coach, Dave Nolan. New goalkeeper comes in, has to face a penalty kick, saves it. And now Georgetown on the attack. You know, Julie, we looked at Caitlin Farrell. We showed you some of her highlights. You talked about a natural finisher she is. She has not been able to be unleashed in this match. No, and you've seen her pick up some steam here in these final minutes. Maybe that's a great sign going into overtime because she's still got some legs left, clearly. You saw her burst out of midfield on the play before that. She's the other first team All-American for this Hoya team. Herman Trophy semifinalist. One goal in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Thank you. 
Grace Newman picks it up. Right into the heart of the one minute, defense. One minute remaining in the second half. And Rujewski just could not get around the defense of Georgetown and Megan Nally. Prusa turning, 30 seconds to play. Royson, the freshman right back for Georgetown. Defended well by Fox, it'll still be a throw for the Hoyas. Another ball on the field. As the countdown is on. And to overtime. We go. How about that for Lauren Gallagher? And, and, and what that does, too, to the team when you have obviously something that could be a real downer for the team, and she makes that save, and you're back in it. I mean, that is an emotional boost. And this is going to be the challenge for North Carolina. How do they come back? They're thinking we're going to close this game out with that penalty kick, right? So you have that mentally now to get over. And you saw them in those last five minutes. They were much flatter than we've seen them, and that's going to be the challenge for this for them in this overtime. Who will reach out and grab the momentum in overtime? As both teams take a moment to gather themselves, we'll do the same. We are headed to overtime in this first NCAA Women's College Cup semifinal. Nothing is better than you and I together I just want to stay until the morning sun Lay here forever, you and I together I just want to stay until the morning sun Win the holidays with 2018's most unique gift Now up to 25% off site-wide Exclusively at OriginalGrain.com Plenty of drama here in Cary, North Carolina in our first semifinal of the 2018 NCAA Women's College Cup. No score after 90 minutes between Georgetown and North Carolina. Let's take a look back, Julie, at some of the moments in this one worth remembering. Oh, early on, Georgetown having a lot of good looks. Carusa being the instigator of a lot of that. North Carolina also in that first half. This is one of their best looks at the near post. Leshnik for UNC coming up big on occasion. And also this Kimball look. Oh my goodness, just pulls it wide. If she can get that one on target. And to finish the first half, Rachel Dorwick with the miss clear, trying to pick it up. And Checkman's been there this game. And tell this, and you see this injury here, pulling your knee. That puts her out of the game. Lauren Gallagher having to sub in. And how about this being your first play? That gets the penalty call. Madison Schultz on the end of that one. And Taylor Otto steps up. And the first touch of the game for Lauren Gallagher is this great reaction save. Oh my goodness. And here we are. You thought the script <laughs> might be written right there for North Carolina. Backup goalkeeper. They have a penalty kick. 
Uh uh. There you see the overtime records for both teams. Georgetown's played six overtime matches, have not lost in overtime this season. No wins for North Carolina, but they are coming off of a draw against UCLA in the quarterfinals where they won on penalty kicks. So we'll start our first overtime period. It will be two 10 minute periods if needed. It is a golden goal or sudden victory, however you like to call it. North Carolina out shooting Georgetown 8 to 4 in that second half, 12 to 9 overall. I like the way that Megan Nally just started that first half for Georgetown. That's the outside back, number 23. She says, All right, give me this game. Brings it up, brings it into North Carolina's half. We get on the attacking end. She's had quite a game, Nally. Brianna Pinto, as you said, will she put her stamp on this match? She sure did it in her first ever game in a Tar Heel uniform. Scored directly off a free kick. Little slip there from Zoe Rude. Did get back up to her feet, but couldn't quite catch the ball. Rude over to Bailey. Pinto was waiting for it. Rihanna Pinto just needs a little opening, stumbling, loses it, a foul is called, this one just outside the area, and Gallagher may have to come up big again. And this is what Pinto can do, just weaving through three, four players, a little bit of a touch there, gets her off balance. Oof, another good look for North Carolina. just outside a couple inches away from being a second penalty kick had that been a little bit further in if you're north carolina julie i have to think you have to get those missed opportunities the what might have been out of your mind and you got to think again lauren gallagher's had one touch in this game you have to get this on frame make her make a save Right? How many times have we seen North Carolina in this situation not put it on goal? Yeah, Ashley steps back, the shot is taken, it's into the wall, and now it's out. Fan wants a souvenir, I don't think she's going to keep it. How about that? A little deception. Nearly got through. not the player Ashley as I thought initially who took it she fooled me looked down for a second it was actually the player in the wall touched the ball out for North Carolina Georgetown trying to continue the best season in school history statistically first time ever they've gone undefeated through a season 21 wins a school record it is their second appearance ever in the ncaa women's college cup and second in three years as they lost in the semifinals in 2016 as did north carolina kimball the recipient of that ball she tries to get it back to rade ashley Plenty of time to pick this delivery out, and it's into the gloves of Gallagher. Good look by Julia Ashley, though. She just gets a little cut back, and this is a nice ball. All it again takes is that slashing run with a little deflection for Carolina. That's been something that's been missing tonight on the end of that. Lauren Gallagher, by the way, last appeared in goal for Georgetown on September 16th in a 4 0 win over Columbia. Stakes a bit higher this time around in the national semifinal. Having to come in for the injured Ariel Schechtman. It was with just over seven minutes remaining in the match regulation. Kimball. 
Livingstone, slowed her down, that the ball gets through. Carusa. Nowhere to go. Ashley overlapping. Jones just couldn't get it off the bounce. Fox making a run now from the back line. Ball runs away from her. Florida State and Stanford going to have to wait a little longer to make their 2018 NCAA College Cup debut. They'll face off in our second semifinal. You notice a lot of number ones in front of these team names. All four number one seeds advanced to the NCAA Women's College Cup for the first time since 2011. It's tough to get a seat right now at Wake Med Soccer Park as well, Salem Stadium. Sold out crowd for our two semifinals tonight. They have been entertained in this first match, which is still looking for a winner. Taylor Otto with the touch. She was the one who missed the penalty kick, had it saved by Gallagher. Game could have been over right there for North Carolina. Job done into the championship, not the case. Get a look at this great crowd. Great stadium as well. Home to the North Carolina Courage in the NWSL. 2018 champs. Will this be lucky number 13 in the corner kick department for North Carolina? And Georgetown hasn't really changed its approach. Full zone, two post players. Ruben Moy kept it away from the tar. Heels, unfortunately, for her. And then couldn't get her foot back onto it. I'll tell you what, if I'm a North Carolina, I want an 800 meter state champion in track as my outside back. Oh, you got it. <laughs> yes, I do. Julia Ashley, I mean, one and done. There you go. She's She's put some mileage in this game, and she is still running strong on that right side, on that flank. Was, was she the one that did Anton tell she ran 11 miles or yes. something like that? Yes. In the quarterfinal against UCLA? 11 miles. I said that's how you get to be the leading assist player on the team with 10. Number 16, Julie Ashley. She doesn't stop. She said she thought for a hot second about doing track in college as well. And she's like, yeah, I didn't think my body would take it. <laughs> I'd say I blame her too much for that. She does quite a bit of running with this North Carolina soccer team, as you just documented in games and in training as well. But Ashley, a senior, it's her last chance to try to win a national championship, something so many Tar Heels have come through and done. Georgetown looking to make that history, win it for the first time. First they have to get there. The flick. Nobody on the other end of it though for the Hoyas. Sarah Trussell boots it forward. Bailey, Otto, two combining in the midfield, so important for North Carolina. Up to Rade now. Kimball waiting. First touch enough, though, for that defense to take it away from her. Stingy Hoyas, as they've been all season long. Second in the country, goals against average. But a back up goal! And Taylor Otto started that entire thing. And she has done such a good job in midfield of acting as that shield. And here she is on the other side, just trying to get a toe around. And Gallagher out off her line quickly, did well there. She doesn't put any pressure on. Then Otto has the chance to face up a little bit. 
And you look how close Otto came with Gallagher charging at her. There's a lot of contact right there. Gonna go against Ten, people in North Carolina. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. But he's in total. That concludes the first overtime period. Time. Still no score. Minutes. And we'll rack it up. Double zeros indeed. Again. Gallagher keeping it that way at the moment. And she's stepped in for Georgetown, and Leshnack stood tall for North Carolina through 100 minutes so far. <laughs> Maybe trying to loosen her team up a little bit. But they've been there, done that, going into overtime in this NCAA tournament in the quarterfinals, taking on UCLA, the two seed, Julia Ashley with an early goal. And then they had a two goal lead in North Carolina. But that was until Haley Mace scored twice in just over a minute in the second half to tie it up. So it was 2-2 between these two teams. They go to penalty kicks. Leshnack comes up with one save. big save. Claudia Dickey, the backup goalkeeper, makes the shot. And then another big save does it for North Carolina. They <laughs> advance. So you got to think if they get there, they're feeling fairly confident, especially in their goalkeeper. Jen, you must have loved that right there. I Three did. goalkeepers Boom. coming up big. Where was the backup goalkeeper, Claudia it. Dickey, I making the When she PK. stepped up, I, I was watching that game. I remember thinking, I love this. I always thought that. Goalkeepers should take every penalty kick. You're always doing it against your, your teammates. I, I in training, that. right? And your, your other goalkeeping teammates. And you guys always take a ton on each other. Yeah. Well, actually, I... I just generally didn't kick the ball very much at all. People, <laughs> nobody wanted me to do that. You weren't the modern day keeper. I was day, not indeed. Me. Well, you have to think. Less snack. <laughs> Tongue out and advantage if we do go to penalties. As we said, North Carolina, confident, have the experience, just did it the last round against UCLA. Meanwhile, Georgetown. It's a different story. Their first team All-American and two-time Big East goalkeeper of the year out of this match. It's their backup, Lauren Gallagher, who'd have to do it. But hey, she already has one penalty kick save. And, and there's Sheckman already on crutches. But how about Gallagher coming in like that? I mean, and then coming off her line as quickly as she did there against Taylor Otto. Yeah. Oh, that's I can't even imagine the nerves stepping off Cole off the bench <laughs> going into that situation. It's one of our questions, too, in our second game. Who will we see in goal for Florida State? They've been without their starting goalkeeper throughout this NCAA tournament, but there is a chance Brick Bollinger could be back. Mark DeCorian telling us a game time decision. So th that backup goalkeeper doesn't often get a lot of love, but they could be playing rather big roles in this NCAA tournament. North Carolina out shooting Georgetown. Certainly getting more corner kicks in this match. So the Hoyas had several in the first half and early, but they have not had one Georgetown since the first half. Meanwhile, North Carolina has taken 13 of them. And on any. What do you think, Julie? Anything that you see? I mean, when you get to the second overtime, the teams pick their moments to push, or they try to just gut it out for the most part. What do you think the strategy is for these two teams? You gotta, you gotta pick your moments for sure. I mean, you've got tired legs. The last thing you wanna do is overstretch and open that game up. But you also have to be brave enough to pick your moments and go and believe it can happen. Bailey could have a moment right here. Don't Shot, but she made the first save. 
I'm going to guess that was Nally on the follow-up as well. How about this first save? Again, Gallagher just in with seven minutes to play in regulation because of the Sheckman injury. Her positioning is perfect. And there's Nally on that backside as perfectly timed as you can coming across. Well, Carolina still pressing it's in Gallagher's gloves. And that was a perfect lesson in what a back should do. You cover across. A nice turn by Bailey. She's in. And Nally just having the presence to say, I'm going to back you up. I got you. Biggie's Defensive Player of the Year, allowing her backup goalkeeper to come away from that whole exchange with a big smile on her face. Once she made the first save, two. Thank goodness for my teammates. As you said, Kurgan have got her back, but North Carolina pressing now. Haley turned and found herself open to the chance to and take that really first shot. That's really been the case for most of the game for North Carolina. They're getting in those positions, and it's either a heroic effort from a Georgetown defender sliding in off to Nally, or they're just not getting it on target. But there's only so many times you can give North Carolina before they put it in the back of the net. Here's Bailey again. Dorian Bailey still with it. Had Fox trying to sneak it in front, but plenty of Georgetown jerseys there. Ball sent across. Top of the area for Bailey. She's been all over the ball for North Carolina. Pinto touched it out for Fox. Back to Pinto. Will there be a shot for North Carolina after all this possession? Andrew Jeske doesn't get a shot, does get another corner. And that's where I think if you're Carolina, you've got to start resorting to, I'm going to flight that ball in there hopefully get a person on the end of it and really again see if we can test Gallagher. Driven ball headed by Georgetown. Bingham is going to give it back to Ruben Moy looking for another service. I think everyone in North Carolina was looking for the service. Instead, Ruben Moy tried to change it up, put it on the ground. Alex Kimball had a rest. Now back Substitution in North for North Carolina, checking in number 47. Alex Richard Kimball. Senior from checking Chapel Hill, North Bridget, Carolina. Andrew Jeske. As Andrew Jeske heads to the sideline. So the number you see there, both second half and overtime, North Carolina's really been on the front foot out shooting Georgetown. Schultz, two defenders in front of her, gets the shot off. Got to be ready back there, ladies. <laughs> Was told one ball earlier, I can't remember who took it, but it made it to the parking lot. I mean, there's some power. <laughs> there's some power coming off the feet. A lot of these players are ready in the stands. Or the parking lot, I guess. Did have the ball bounce up, bounce up here once in the booth. I can't say I made a very good save on it. It was a pretty <laughs> pathetic attempt, actually. Emily Fox. Seen her in the attack more these last few minutes. Bumped off the ball and a little bit too much of a bump from Jenna Stout. Corey Penso calling it pretty tight in this match. And this is what happens when you take on players. I like that Emily Fox has that mindset every time she gets the ball. We saw her on the flank doing that as well. And such a savvy player, Emily Fox. I mean, one who was with the U-20 Women's World Cup team in August and then went with the full U.S. Women's National Team, getting a look there from Jill Ellis, who's that team 
continues its preparations for the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France. Farrell with the ball at her feet, charging forward. Carolyn gets to it. Couldn't get it through. The Tar Heel defense on the near post. Fox, a lot of room. Who's going to go with her? There's some support. Ashley comes and gets it. Now to Pinto. Back to Ashley, the senior. Julia Ashley lays it off. Doyle. <laughs> emotion how about that for your game winner after all these minutes it starts all the way in your own half with Emily Fox and outside back she passes again Pinto finds Julia Ashley another outside back what a beautiful series started from one outside back Anson said at the start of this half I need to get my outside backs forward ended with another outside back 800 meter track star that stayed with soccer and a good thing she did for North Carolina what a nice finish by Ashley and a great goal in the 108th minute as Georgetown might have been thinking they were so close to hanging on in this one, pushing it to penalty kicks. But North Carolina slicing its way through the defense to get the game-winning goal. And now they're headed to the NCAA championship game. They'll get the winner of our next semifinal between Florida State and Stanford. Could be an ACC championship rematch, potentially. And gosh, but if you're Georgetown, I know that's disappointing, but what a season, what a game for them. What a way with Gallagher coming in and saving that. Lots to be proud of if you're a Hoya. Tremendous season by Georgetown. And for North Carolina, they're not done yet. In search of NCAA championship number 22, they've taken one step on closer to that goal. They know they're in the Detroit championship. Apart, we have to wait to find out. We'll have Florida State and Stanford coming up before that. E60 pictures fight on the Jake Olsen story, but come back here before too long. We'll have that second NCAA Women's College.